and welcome to the round so far, brought to you by Amy. Great to have Amy back on board again for season 2024. I'm Riley Beveridge. I'm here at NG Stadium, where the Giants have just defeated the Pies. But I'm joined, as always, back in Melbourne by Kane Corns. Kane, back again for another year. Great to be back. And you had the rock star treatment. What a performance it was from your Giants. Looking forward to hearing about <laughs> your experience in the coach's box very, very shortly. But this was a statement. I mean, it's hard, and you've got to be careful not to overreact to round one. But they have spoken a big game. They said that they hate Collingwood. There's been by play. So when you have that, you've got to back it up. And I just thought they were brilliant tonight. They were so tough. They certainly were. And you didn't see that any more than you did when they were going inside 50. Their efficiency in attack was awesome. 114 points. The third most conceded under Craig McRae at Collingwood. Yeah, so I just thought Collingwood were off defensively. I mean, that's what they've hung their hat on. They rate themselves as a very good defensive side. You can see them sagging off the mark there. That's Callum Brown. That got him going. He kicked five. He was a star. But it wouldn't have happened if they didn't sag off the mark. Once again, the sag off the mark and allow an extra... 10, 12 metres run and carry the ball and failure to kill that. Aaron Cadman takes mark. What's Jordan Ngoi? Is he awake or is he asleep or is he still thinking about premierships? Because he did not care for Tom Green. Start of the second quarter. There's another goal. There's four on one. Four on one, but the Giants win a ground ball inside forward 50. Center the ball up. It's scrappy. Failure to kill that and Brown takes another easy mark. So once again, we're seeing it here time and time again. They went inside forward 50. Collingwood sagged off. They showed them no respect and the Giants made them pay. You mentioned the big build-up to it and the, the hatred that exists between these two sides. Mason Cox has been a big stirrer of that over the summer. We saw pre-game, he went into the Giants' midfield huddle, got himself a hit out. What did you make of this? If you're going to talk a big game and you're going to act like a clown, well, we don't mind it, provided you play well. He didn't touch the footy for the first half of the game, Mason Cox. Had the opportunity to mark the ball. Now, he was a liability tonight. So if you're going to say that it's a showground in the off-season, if you're going to do that with Mumford pre-game, you want to play better than you did tonight. So I think he's a bit of a laughing stock tonight. He'll look back and say, I've got the Premiership medal. But I just thought he embarrassed himself in the lead-up to this game and with his performance on the night. There's a bit of an injury scare for the Giants with their former captain, Callum Ward, going off with a shoulder injury. Do you reckon Bo McCreary's got something to worry about here? Because he drove him into the ground. He had an arm pinned. The AFL hasn't liked this in the past. Well, you're the expert, I reckon. I looked at it and I, I, I winced and I thought he's in trouble. That was my yeah. first instinct. Now, luckily, it's no head, but that's a nasty AC joint. You can see it popped up. That's six weeks. So mm. do the AFL care about shoulders or do they only care about heads? And did McCreary show a duty of care to Callum Ward in that instance? I would say no. And with the new landscape, I would think he's in a little bit of trouble. Fortunately, his head's OK. Yeah, I'm with you, Kane. I think he's probably got a little bit to worry about because of the pinning of the arms. It would be much worse if he did hurt his head. But I still think it probably gets graded severe given the fact that he had to go off the ground with that shoulder injury. You mentioned before, I watched this game from the coach's box here at NG Stadium. The Giants have been awesome to work with all week. Went up on, on Wednesday. Uh, you can see, tried to get out of this shot with BT post-game. Oh, but, look at him. Uh, you love it. So tell me about it. What, what was the experience like? What, you know, you've never done anything like this before. No. It's really interesting. It's fascinating. Great access they gave you. Yeah, it was fantastic. I mean, spent the whole week with the club, basically, as they prepared for this game from 72 hours out on Wednesday. But the thing that just surprised me most being in the coach's box was just how methodical they were, how clear they were. It took them five seconds, no joke, five seconds for the game to start for them to figure out exactly how Collingwood was setting up, exactly how they could adjust to that and how they could counter it throughout the game. The intensity in the coach's box was there. Even though the margin reached nine goals at one point, they were, they were on it the whole way through the game right until the final siren sounded. There wasn't a single celebration until the final final siren sounded. Stay tuned to afl.com.au because we'll do a full wrap-up of our week here at the Giants as well. So plenty to get through there. I want to speak about Friday night footy because it was the most remarkable contest at the Gabba. What, what a win it was. Oh, I couldn't believe this. I couldn't believe what I was watching. Footy's unbelievable with all the injuries they've got. This man's been criticised so heavily. His kicking wasn't great in the pre-season, but he's clearly worked on his routine. And then in this big moment, huge contested mark with a minute 18 goes back and slots it for the win. I've got a different view. I know he's getting his flowers and everyone's celebrating this, but that's what he's paid to do. That's what the big forwards do, and that's what he needs to do. When he's on a million dollars a year, he's got to stand up and win games off his own boot, just like Kurnow does. But look at the kick there. Perfectly into that little diamond that we've highlighted. Thought Brisbane's defending in the second half was poor. Nobody on him, and he made them pay. 
bit of an Amy Klunger here. The lights have gone out oh, at no. Empty Stadium, but we will get through it. 46 points down, one of the biggest comebacks of all time from the Blues. Four goals in four minutes to start the third term. How did they do it? Well, I thought they got uh, ascendancy from the midfield, and then it was just the momentum. Like They just couldn't stop it, Brisbane. Like Everything was just running their way. Uh, I thought Cripps was enormous through the midfield. I thought De Koning was amazing in the ruck. The superstars came to play. Charlie Kernel, I thought, turned the game. Saad on Cameron. This was a big moment. Undisciplined from Bailey. Clearly, that was a free kick to Saad. He kicks it away. They go back down and get Charlie Kernow going off the back of that 50. And then they just could not stop it. It was a wave. It's one of the best wins I've seen in my time mm. you know, watching Carlton. This effort from Akers. And just moments before that, he'd take the intercept mark on the goal line and save the goal. And then he sets that one up. So the turnover ball, the clearance, they had it all going. And it was the best of Carlton in that second half. It certainly was. Some bad news for both sides coming out of this game, though. Kitty Coleman rupturing his ACL following a collision in the second quarter. There was also a really bad one for Sam Doherty, who ruptured his ACL as well. It's his third ACL injury for Sam Doherty, so some really bad news for him. You can see these incidents here. I don't know how the Lions replaced Kitty Coleman. He was just about best on ground on grand final day last year, wasn't he, Kane? Yeah, no, I don't know how either. I mean, he's the one. He, he's the starter off halfback. He's the ball user. So Zorko will go back there, but the guy's 35 years of age, so that's a big ask. But, yeah, he's a, he's a big loss. And then this looked innocuous, didn't it, with Doherty? There was a click there, clearly. Stayed out there for a bit, went off, came back on, subbed out, and a third ACL. You wouldn't believe the unlucky um, you know, fortune this guy has had. What a player, what a person. And he's going to be missing again. They can't afford to lose too many more, Carlton. They've already got some mm. key you know, prime movers out. All right, let's get to our Amy Clangers now. We will start at the Gabba. It was Orazio Fantasia's first game for the Blues. Not sure they had any Gatorade, though, in the Carlton change room, so just giving him a fake Gatorade shower. Yeah, I don't mind it. I think the players are <laughs> respectful of the cleaners that have to clean it up. What about this for a goal? He could hardly sniff the ball, Van Royen, on the night, and then he did that, this. And James Brochure in the commentary uh, had the nerve to ask whether he did that deliberately. No, no, <laughs> that was an absolute fluke, an Amy Clanger. And what about this up on the Gold Coast now? Dustin Martin, we know he's out of contract. We know his old coach is there now, Dimmer Hardwick. Can they get him at the Suns in 2024? We'll have to see. Let's stay at People First Stadium where Gold Coast did record such a pivotal win over Richmond. And it was our Saturday star, Matt Rowell, who contributed most to it. 20 clearances, Kane. Yeah, look, I've been hard on Matt Rowell just because I, I would love and have wanted him to get some easy ball, but maybe I've just got to accept this is what he is, and he's an absolute freak at doing this. His career disposals is 18, so if he can start getting that to 24, 25, like the best midfielders do, you're not going to play like this every week. Like that, that's a, He will hardly play a better career game than this for the rest of his career. It's unbelievable, and he took it to uh, a much more experienced Richmond midfield in Prestia and Taranto and Hopper, who had their pants pulled down. He got them going, full quarter performance, 20 clearances. He put them on his back single-handedly. Uh, it was just awesome to watch. He was like a machine out there. Certainly was. As you mentioned, a big game for Dimmer Hardwick. His first game as Gold Coast coach, his first game back against Richmond where he coached three flags. This is what he had to say about the experience. Oh, good, but it's always a little bit like that at round zero slash one anyway. You know, the, the build-up of nerves and it's a mixture of, you know, nervousness, anxiousness excitement, all those things build up into one. So you're never quite sure what you're feeling. What you are feeling is that inner turmoil. Um, you know, the game's challenging. And I think I was just really pleased that our fans and our players could sort of see the way we wanted to play and how we wanted to go about it. Now, Kane, you've had your questions and your concerns about Richmond's ground kicking for quite a while. I know you've had some... You've been outspoken on, on Tim Taranto. What did you make of it today? Yeah, it was poor today, wasn't it, across the board? So if Adam Uze is asking them to play an up-tempo fast game. Maybe they don't have the personnel to do that or the leg speed because time and time again they mucked around with the footy and they turned it over. I thought Gold Coast was so well set up behind the ball. Anderson, sorry, Powell was a star. Anderson through the midfield but uh, Collins was really strong back there. Ballard is a really good interceptor and like stuff like this. I mean, where is he trying to kick that? So it's all well and good to have a game style but if you don't have the personnel that can pull off that game style, you're in trouble. And it wasn't until I guess both Rioli started to insert themselves in the game that they looked dangerous. I just don't think you can have Prestia, you can't have Taranto, you can't have Hopper through the same midfield. So they're going to have to at least have Bolton in there uh, for, for one of the rotations. Um, Dustin Martin's going to have to be in there. And maybe Rioli goes from halfback mm. to the midfield because they just look slow 
and they continually hack the ball forward and it goes nowhere, and that's what I've been critical of. They've, I mean, they have sold the farm for this midfield, so it's mm. really disappointing for them to put up a performance like that. We showed Rouse numbers. He wasn't the only one, and they were clean stoppages to score. Um, so Richmond really let themselves down in that area today. We just see how it plays out for the Tigers over the 2024 season. Let's get to the SCG on Thursday night, where Sydney recorded victory over Melbourne. And Brody Grundy, the XD and the XPI, he's joined the Swans over the summer and he was integral to this win. Yeah, so there's the matchup, the numbers. He clearly got the chocolates. I thought he played with real spark and energy. I thought he looked quicker across the ground. I thought his first couple of steps, he looked really sharp. So maybe he's worked on that. You can see the tactics there, crossing the line and not allowing Gorn to whack it out in space or get it forward like Melbourne can be so powerful. So, yeah, really good acquisition. I, I put it on him before this game because it's mm. been two years since I've seen him play a good game, Brody Grundy. I thought, is he still the same player that he once was? We all talk about him as an All-Australian, but I haven't seen it for two years. So I was wrapped for him. It's a little bit like Mackay. What a way to start your season. What a confidence builder that is because you're not going to go up against any better ruckman than Max Gorn. He took it to him. And he led that Sydney midfield who, when they have been beaten in the past, we've shown their numbers. They often yeah. get beaten through the midfield. And particularly in the second half, I thought they were awesome. And that was without three of their prime movers who were out injured, Parker Mills and Adams. Felt like 22 and 23 all over again for the Ds. The way they moved the ball forward and their inability to link the midfield from their attack was... It was such a downfall for them yet again. What did you make of it? Yeah, look, I give them a, a small out because of the ground, the conditions and the personnel. So there's three factors in there, but mm. the method was, it was just like watching the same bad movie over and over again. High number of inside 50s can't score. I mean, the forwards refuse to move and the ball carrier f refuses to take a risk or get it in quick. We're going to show some highlights of Nick Blakey shortly. Mm. Gee, wouldn't Melbourne love him in their side? Because he makes it up, he takes it on, he shifts the line, he gets it in quick and gives your forwards a chance. Good luck to Josh Shackey, who's, you know, a C-grade player at best. Not going to succeed with that delivery and those entries. You mentioned Nick Blakey. He's such an incredible footballer because he was matching up on Jacob Van Royen at one stage, Bailey Fritch another, Charlie Spargo. He plays on so many different types of players. But his ability to attack and then become such an offensive weapon for Sydney is remarkable. Yeah, I'm trying to work out where he actually sits in the elite category of player in the game because that's what he can do. He breaks the lines with speed and he's a beautiful kick. But then he does this. He goes, this, OK, uh, we're just down for a minute. I'm going to go and play on the opposition's best key forward. And he did that last year when mm. Sydney had all those injuries. I remember in gather round, he was enormous playing above his height, plays whatever role he's asked. There's Spargo. OK, I'm just going to back myself in to win the footy and I'm going to outbody my opponent who's smaller than me. But when he's on a taller opponent, he plays it differently. And then he does that, whack, through the middle of the ground. I, I don't know. He's closing in on the top 15 player in the league for me, Nick Blakey. I, I spoke about him a lot on this program mm -hmm. last year. I'm a huge fan of him. Every time I see him, I think, wow, I'd love to have him in my team. I think he's one of the most watchable players in the game. And, I mean, the sky's the limit on how good this guy can be. Speaking of how good players that the Swans can be, you tweeted out on Thursday night about Will Haywood. You said, for the category of best player in the AFL that no one talks about, I'll take Will Haywood. It's going to be an interesting year for him. He's out of contract. He's South Australian. I know those South Australian clubs are going to come hard for him, but he was fantastic on Thursday night. They should night. have drafted him. Uh, both, well, Adelaide certainly should have drafted him at the time, and they didn't. That was a mistake. The thing I love about him, like, he just plays a selfless role. Uh, he'll end up with 10 possessions and two goals, but... He bobs up in big moments like this. Look at the time, look at the score, and who is it? Will Haywood, really good overhead, good at ground level, tackles hard, plays a team role. Every year I think he gets voted as best team man at Sydney, and I'd love to see him in the midfield. That, that's the next step. Now, it probably won't happen at Sydney because of the numbers through there, but if he went somewhere else, he may get that um, experience, and we'll see how his contract goes for the rest of the year. Hey, from next week, we're going to put Kane's question on social media. So stay tuned to the AFL social accounts. You can have your say and ask Kane whatever you want. But this week, Kane, I want to say, what do you make of opening round? It's done and dusted now. Two games in New South Wales, two games in Queensland. I personally loved it. I was at the SCG of Thursday you loved night. It. Of course you <laughs> loved tonight. it. They rolled out the red carpet for you. Of course you <laughs> want to go back there next year. No, in all seriousness, I, I liked it. Um, uh, would I like all nine games at once? Probably. But we got some crackers and footy's back and there's not much to complain about. Certainly isn't. Round one is next week. We'll be back on the round so far. Brought to you by Amy. Thanks again, Kane. See you, mate.